pamphlets on this matter and just producing a documentary on this matter isn't enough. That's just a starting point. It, it, it gives us the tools we need to actually get something done about these terrorist camps. So if we're unable to then take this documentary and our literature and get it into the hands of the people that can actually act upon that information to shut these terrorist camps down, then our program, our efforts will have been a complete failure. So what we need to do once all of this material is in our hands, these tools, is to get them into the hands of governors of all 50 states because Sheikh Jelani says he has camps in 22 states of America. 22 states of America. As far as all law enforcement reports that we have seen, they've only been able to identify 13 states that have terrorist camps. But Sheikh Jelani says, no, that's wrong. I have camps in 22 states. So we got to get this into the hands of all 50 governors and into the state legislators and into local law enforcement, state police agencies, including sheriff departments. That's a massive distribution process, I know, but it's what we have to do if we want to conquer these people who, in turn, want to conquer us. So we have to get into the hands of state officials, but also we got to get it into the hands of members of Congress. We got to get it in the hands of the State Department and to the FBI, Homeland Security. Uh, the FBI uh, Terrorism Task Force. All these people have got to understand the same information so that our government, both local, state, and federal, can start to take the right action to shut these camps down. And our question has always been, why is not Sheikh Jilani and its Muslims of America terror camps scattered around the United States are not already on the State Department's terrorist watch list? Why are they not there? If they were there, then our government would have the tools they need to shut them down. They would have the tools to go after their banking records. They would have the tools to make sure that they weren't able to go out and buy firearms. They would have the tools to make sure that they were not allowed to have firearms on their property, which they do. So we have to get them on the terrorist watch list. And in order to do that, that's a massive distribution effort on our part to get it into the hands of the thousands of people, thousands of people who can actually do something about this terrorist group that wants to turn around and kill us. And not only wants to kill us, they've already been known to kill people. They've already been suspected in 17 firebombings and 10 assassinations throughout the United States. These people are murderers, they're assassins. And they want to kill us and they want to kill our families, and they are plotting, and no one's doing anything about it because they're hiding behind the First Amendment protections of our country by setting up on compounds, preventing law enforcement to do what they need to do to actually investigate them, learn what their activities and their plans and their plotting is, what is actually on that property, such as weapons of mass destruction. Are they hiding terrorists on that property? These are some very smart terrorists who, in turn, use our laws against us and prevent law enforcement from basically shutting them down, and that's got to be solved. And backing up to the uh, whole notion of there being a certain amount of camps you've been able to find that law enforcement is able to identify, and then Sheikh Jelani saying, no, I have camps in 22 states. Some are out there that we don't know about, maybe don't know where they are. And how big of a concern should that be to people who are from any given state, whether or not they have any kind of tools to try to identify some of those camps and help us with that information or find some information that they want to give to law enforcement authorities if they suspect of, of property being used that way? You, you know, uh, I think there's a misconception among the American public. But we do, as Americans, trust our government. We trust our FBI. We trust our State Department. We trust our Justice Department. We trust our sheriffs and our state police. And the, the conception is, is that there's a lot of money there, a lot of uh, law enforcement officials there who have the manpower to ferret out all these terrorist camps that are popping up through the United States. When in actuality, that's not the case at all. Most of these terrorist camps are set up in what I call the backyards of America. They live in rural America. They live in the mountains and they live among the trees. And it's easy for them to set up a camp in one part of the state as a base. 
and then use the money that they get from all kinds of illegal uh, criminal activity, drug smuggling and selling counterfeit goods, to then take that money and start buying up other pieces of property throughout that state where law enforcement does not have a big presence, where the sheriff's department is very small, and when there may not be an FBI agent field office for literally miles around. And they can then begin to buy up that property and begin to turn it into a stairs camp underneath the noses of law enforcement, underneath the noses of neighbors, without anyone uttering a word. So this is a real problem. And that's why it's critical that we also inform the public so they keep their eyes open and their ears open. And they can then inform local law enforcement as well as federal law enforcement that there are a terrorist group that is setting up a camp inside of their community. And a problem I would identify, they go to the federal authorities and hear nothing. They think maybe they're the only ones who have seen some problem like this. Is there a place they can go to receive support from others who are in the same situation from fellow Americans? I'd be thinking about, you know, how do we get everybody on the same page and get information out and sharing? Well, you know, that's going to be a, 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 a re very real problem that you identify. If they do see a group of uh, Islamic fundamentalists that apparently have set up a camp in their neighborhood, in their hills, and they have a paramilitary training course there, and they are a part of Muslims of America, which is a known terrorist group, and they call their local law enforcement, they probably will not hear anything back. If they call their local FBI agent, they probably will not hear anything back. And the reason is because there really is nothing local law enforcement or FBI can do about it. We do not have the laws in our books to be able to prevent any Islamic group that preaches jihad against America, who swears to, to uproot our nation and destroy our nation. There are no laws in America that prevents a group from buying up property with the purpose of destroying us. So that's why our documentary has got to get in the hands of law makers so that the appropriate laws are passed to make sure that law enforcement does have the tools they need to do something about these terror camps that are popping up. But if someone knows of a camp and they call their local official and they get a blank stare or they don't get a response that they feel acceptable, then they should notify the Christian Action Network. And the reason is because we, as an organization, are gathering law enforcement officials together who understand this issue, who are interested in this issue, who will use that information to actually do something about it and especially if we get the laws passed, it gives them the tools to do something about it.